So going back, I'm going to give you this historical um, idea of how Cuban Rica Systematics grew in Brazil. And this is started basically on this ongoing project that we started in 2012. It was a government, um, initially it was a government initiative because we wanted to figure out how many species of animals we had in Brazil. Because every, all countries are like, oh, Columbus says he has the most number of um, bird species. I don't know, we don't know, we didn't know how many species of birds there were in Brazil. So this initiative was really important, and especially we also had no idea how many insect species we had in Brazil. So we started this project in 2012. Uh, it went public in this uh, website in 2015. And as of last week, when I finished the talk, we had 128, well, 128,000 species of animals in Brazil. And this project involves around 800 animal taxonomists, mostly Brazilian, but not all of them. Uh, I'm the Okinomica coordinator for the project, and those are all my colleagues that are involved in cataloging and putting the system. The online system is terrible. But the, those people are really heroes to work with me to try to put all the species in the system and the, and the database. So those are our main colleagues. So unfortunately, some of them are not here. Um, so in Brazil, we have basically most species on Heteroptera, um, 5,000 species, 6,000 species in the Heteroptera. And we have about almost 4,000 species of Ocamica in Brazil. And that's basically um, mostly 13% of the world fauna. And that's what we are actually getting for the whole Ocamica. 30% of the world fauna. And that's a really high number in comparison to other insect groups, because insect groups they range about 8, eight to 9% of the world fauna, but not going to make over really, really high, and that's related to the whole historical background that I showed you. So the fauna of Okinorica in Brazil is comparable to what we have in Europe in terms of number of species, uh, and it's a little bit lower than whole Africa and obviously lower than in the Arctic. And it's, if you compare group by group of Okinawa in Brazil, we see really striking, uh, strange differences. For example, um, we have a very low number of fecormors recorded from Brazil, uh, 670 in comparison to all those comparable farms, especially in Europe. Uh, we have a really high number of leaf hoppers, over 10,000 species of leaf hoppers recorded in the country, and that's more than in Europe. And obviously, we have a very, very, very high number of uh, tree hopper species in Brazil. That's 718 in the missing one. Uh, the history of Brazil and Canarica, obviously, I'm going to show some, some um, uh, species through time plots and number of species described with the time. And the first species that were recorded from Brazil, they were actually not necessarily described from Brazil. So we have from Linneo's work in 1758, we have several species that are recorded in Brazil and mostly known from Brazil, but they were not they were not necessarily described from Brazil. So that I mean for more Latinaria is really common species in Brazil, described from America, and several other historical botanic groups, Reticulata. It's also uh, it's platinum. It's also a very common species in Brazil. We have Spinovena rubra, very, very common species in Brazil, right? <laughs> and so we have lots of uh, very common species that we've described since the meal occurring in the country. The descriptors of most species of Okinorica in Brazil, and so on, I mean, I'm just talking about species described from Brazil, okay? But these authors describe species from all of, the, all of the countries. And those are the rank of species, that's why over 100 species in Brazil. And obviously we get, we were talking about this a lot, we get uh, the long group to hundreds of top describer of Brazilian species and other historical um, figures, large describer of species of insects, Walker, 267 species, and what you can see here are the Brazilian workers, 
So Rodney Capitola, the event is with 252 species described. Albinos and Capybara, which we're gonna talk later, well, we're gonna talk about most of them, with 163 species, most of them are tree hoppers, and that's why we rank really high in the tree hopper number of species. And here is an owl, this question is mostly a doctor's of a line worker. Um, Rodney works mainly on sick of the lines. Gabriel Michelani working on sick of the lines too. And this list was updated for this Congress, but I gave a similar talk in 2017. And this student here, Alexandri, was just working on his master's in 2017, and now he ranks top 15. This cryptor of species is described 113 species from his, the middle of his master's to now. So it's kind of amazing. I was really surprised when I saw this. So, so the plots I'm gonna show throughout the talk this is the, the historical series uh, since Linnaeus through the uh, number of species here, and here on this uh, axis the cumulative number of species. Okay, and so this is a oh, you can see this is a species accumulation curve, and as you can see through the accumulation curve, uh, the rate of descriptions being kind of steady. So about 15 species of Canorinca described per year. And that's except right at this 1850s, 1860s, we got big monographs of Walker, Sydney, Ray, Ken, Stahl, describing mainly leaf workers. And so we have a little shift in rate right here. We don't have, they don't have a laser pointer, so we're gonna, we're gonna do some mimic here too. Anyway, so this is shifting rate here, but basically has been really steady throughout the years. So this rate is also variable within groups of Okinawinka. Obviously, we describe much, many more leaf hoppers than any other group of Okinawinka. Tree hoppers, about 2.7 species described per year. Fugoromorpha is 2.5, so we kind of bad. And seven, that's less than one species per year of cicadas, and less than one species per year in several points. So Vinton has to do something about this. But this rate, this is the global rate, this rate has changed in the past. So all my calculations I'm gonna to show to uh, sometimes are from 2000 to 2024. So in the past 24 years, this rate has been going up basically in cicadas. I'm gonna show you why in circle points. In tree hoppers, it's going, it's going up, but not very much. But leaf hoppers almost double the amount of species described per year. And in Fuguromorpha, it slowed down, but actually when I showed this in 2017, this bar here, the rate was way over less than one species per year. So we actually increased a little bit from 2017 now. <clears throat> so in the Fuguromorphs, we have about 671 species described in 16 families. Uh, that's a rate of two and a half species per year, and we have two bouts of chains of rates here in a time series. Here, Walker and Stahl, obviously, obviously, but we have a monograph of Broomfield in 85 that also uh, described a lot of Brazilian species there. <clears throat> the first uh, Fugoromorph described by a Brazilian was uh, Famous, not a Brazilian, but he described the way it just like the little kind of value in 63, and they described this district species of a gorgeous second little kind of value for those that obviously uh, might not know. But he was on the, uh, one of the top describers of insects in the world. He worked on myriads, so he was a very, very um, prolific species descriptor, and he he, but mostly on mirrors, but I was surprised I can actually describe this for in the first place uh, in 63. So from 2000 now, basically no one was working on Fuguromorphs in Brazil. So this other graph I'm going to show uh, is from 2000 now, and this is the number of species. When it's red, it's described by um, a foreigner, and when it's green, the species were described by a Brazilian person. So you can see that this has been changed in the last 20 years or so. Uh, we had basically no one working on Fugromorphs. 
we train one doctor student, Marcelo, that already working in schools, not doing our research anymore. We describe the company of prophetics. This is a professor, Rodrigo, who works on CAVE, and he described a couple species with Hanalor, but he's not a taxonomist himself. But in the later years, we have actually trained students that um, are mostly active. So Abner here described one of the first uh, calicellids in Brazil. And so basically now this is a fourth species of calicellids, a formally described calicellids in Brazil. So, uh, this is a papagona, and he actually, during his master's, we're finalizing this manuscript. He worked on a phylogeny of the Totomotoline, it's a tribe of the Kelsarids, and it's basically here. I'm not going to show the details, just give you a panorama of it. So it's based on molecular, molecular data and morphological data. <laughs> but I've been there, unfortunately. Um, decided he would he got more money working programming for companies than doing research. And but now we still we have one very active uh, Brazilian student here postdoc now. Eduarda is has which I'm gonna talk give her talk give a talk the next my next talk will be on the results of her thesis uh, on the academic science. But he has she like in the last year has described over 15, well, 15 species of acolyxids and uh, 60 years. <clears throat> so hopefully we, we have to get a job so that we, we will have a very permanent uh, person working on the Fugura Morpha in Brazil. Um, the cicadas is also didn't have a very steady rate, basically because there's not a lot, not a lot going on. We have two valves, two walkers install, and here, in around 96, this professor, so already retired, Nilsa Martinelli, started describing cicada species with Michelle Goulart. So there's a big peak here in 96, she published several papers on Brazilian cicadas. And that uh, continued on until the late 2000, between 2009 and 2011, to describe more species, usually with Michelle Goulart and a couple of students here. Douglas McKenna is one professor that's actually uh, permanent in Brazil, but he's mostly an ecologist, so he doesn't publish too much in Texas. But in the later years, we have, um, Luis Campos has trained one student, Tatiana Busco, and she has been describing a lot of Brazilian cicadas, but she also doesn't have a position. So we also have to get a hair job to continue on working on cicadas. In the circle points, we have about 200 valid species divided into these four families. Basically, most of them are circulates. Um, our rate of description is about one species per year, it's not a lot. There's a big uh, shift in rate here of descriptions by Walker Stahl. We've seen this in every upcoming group, right? But throughout the 1970s, after 1979 to 2016, Albino Sacacibara, which was a professor already retired in the University of Federal Paraná, and he described about 13 species. That's when he started his career in Okinawa. He decided working on the circopoids and circopoids, and then he trained the student on circopoids, Professor Gervasio Carvalho here. He was already retired and who described a lot of the Brazilian fauna, and, uh, and Andresa was Gervasio student. So Andresa is our permanent uh, hired professor in Curitiba, and so she will continue describing circumference. But I guess there are many need to describe them. The, she should, they, they should do, you should do a better job, they do <laughs> missing her to work on those. Okay, the member points, that's where uh, the Brazilian researchers um, shine. We have most of the species described in the secondary over, obviously, but a large piece of the pie with tree hopper species, and probably the country with the most tree hopper species everywhere. So the tree hoppers has been steadily being described about three species per year. We have this great bounce here 
of Change of Great by Fred Mayer's work, Walk and Stall. And then Albino then, he decided to give up on the sarcophagus, he trained Gervasio, and then he moved on to tree hoppers. And then he started a very prolific career in describing species of tree hoppers, and that's about over 135 species of tree hoppers from Brazil. He described a lot more from other countries in South America. Um, Albino has trained uh, several professors, not Gervasio on circuits. Antonio Carambolati, he's a professor, one active professor in, in northeastern Brazil. He's describing 29 species. Olivia Evangelista also, well, now she's not in Brazil anymore, unfortunately, but she's still active on Tree Hop Uh She helps a lot of Creole's students on describing these new species. So basically, most of the species of tree hoppers have been described by Brazilians, except here we see uh, Jesse Albertson's thesis on the Nico Pines, and she described a lot of species from Brazil. And here, 2017, that's two species here of Sephora. So we got a little red bar here still. <laughs> and it's kind of, when I, when I saw this graph, I kind of almost cried because it, since 2017, we haven't had a single species described from Brazil. And Olivia tells me that that's because most of the new species that have to be described, they are in really hard groups that need public revision. So uh, the rate, their rate's still okay, but it's gonna start to, to slow down pretty soon on species, unless we train more students on training. So we had one uh, master's student, Raisa, she worked on um, the, G the genera Siphonia in Siphonia on tree hoppers. And there are lots of new Siphonia, new Siphonia to describe, five new Siphonia, three new Siphonia. These two genera, they are distinguished by the presence of um, a bifurcation here on this. This is a superhuman horn. And each siphonia that is bifurcated, I don't think you can see really well this picture, but it's bifurcated here, and here is just a silver line, uh, bronze. And then, um, so as you can see in the tree, siphonia is here in red, and the siphonia is here in green, but they are all over the tree. So, no, so neither siphonia, neither uh, each siphonia uh, were recovered as monophyletic. What we see is that, um, Within the cytocyte, we have a single uh, mirroring of the pronotum in several genera. So this pronotum here, it has a constriction here in the middle, and several genera. But the, so there is also, in the base of cytosine, a single origin of this suprahumeral horn, but it's lost in the middle. So parentony here doesn't have suprahumeral, so it's there, they lost it. And there are multiple gains and losses of the median process, which are these ones here. And those actually were the ones that um, uh, diagnosed, they were diagnostic for cyclobino So this happens, they, they gain and loss several times throughout the country, evolution of this group. So it's a very complicated history here. Well, finally, on to leaf hoppers, we have basically that's where most of our diversity of Okanomika is and there's a pretty steady uh, description rate about eight species per year and a few bouts of descriptions here what was in the very stall we saw that before but we got Osborne's paper uh, in 23 to 28 and we have the Young's monographs on the line, and that's in, uh, 1977 Brazilian to describe one leaf hopper. It was uh, Costa Lima. Costa Lima was a very general entomologist in Brazil, very famous. He worked on many groups of insects. Uh, and so they described one. It's a it's a secret line by the way, but it's a that's the only that's the only species he described, I think. But then in 1966, uh, José Alfredo Pinheiro Guta, who was the head of the lab of work today, he when, when I started, he would have had already retired, but he was a student.
student of Zecangelo Carvalho, the lyric worker, and he started working on leaf hoppers on his own, on his own, and from 66 to 93, he described about 18 species, and that's mostly of a galleon and leaf hoppers. And then after that, since 2000, the, a lot of Brazilian workers have been studying the leaf hoppers. Uh, pro a professor, a retired professor, Rani Cavalho, has described 246 species of Brazilian leaf hoppers. Case and all who are also working in the same department and was a student of Sankaki to 131 species. So, yeah, Rani was a Sankaki student. So, as you can see, Sankaki trained many students on different groups of Okinomikas and they were very, all very prolific. Um, Kiris and all work on mostly Delta Cephalines. Gabriel, 128 species, working on cicadoids. And now we have Alexandre, that, uh, who was with Rodney students, and he works mainly on Jacqueline's, it's an Iasine tribe. And Alexandre now, his postdoc, her, his current postdoc is working on the Iasine tribe, high sign. So this is his morphological tree, he hasn't started his molecular work. So if uh, anyone has I assign material to share with me uh, because I have gladly take it for molecular work, especially for health groups of other I assign tribes, if you don't have high allergy assigns. Um, but there are many to describe. There's like, he already detected 12 new genera and 45 new species, but just for high allergy assigns itself. But most of what he worked on was Japanese, so another group of I assigns. And from his morphological tree, we're probably going to write a new tribe within the uh, eye signs. There's this two, this two genera, the Yodona and the Sikama, they used to be high signs. They, they're coming out really unrelated to the remainder of high signs here. And he's been describing like crazy the, the Japanese fauna in Brazil. And also, another one that's contributing to the Japanese fauna is Rito Monsalves. He used to be my postdoc. His main thesis work, this is almost ready for submission, is his work on the um, phylogeny of the Japanese. So his Japanese starts here and keeps going here. So he's redefining really mainly all of the Japanese genera in this tree, and it's based on morphology and molecular markers. And there's um, about 200 types of samples here about basically every genera and subgenera of the Japanese. His, late, his last postdoc, he did uh, phylogeny of Solidia, and actually there's a poster there that you can see in more detail of this if you want to see. That's another tribe, another subfamily we, he revised and had a, we have a phylogeny prepared. Um, the morphological still needs to be revised, but no data set, but all the molecular data is already gathered. It's, this is an endemic, and it's in a, an American subfamily. And we probably won't know, but they, they can be really pretty. Um, one postdoc that's still with me is Jadila Prando. He worked, she worked on her postdoc on, on her doctor thesis on the tribe Porta Naime. It's also an American restricted tribe. And Porta Naime currently has about 65 species and two genera. Actually, we described a third genera recently. Third genus here as the, the one that's sister to the remainder four times. And recently, um, but she still has to finish this revising her morphological work to actually write some more genera here inside the four times. But during her doctoral work, she detected over 30 new species. So she stopped looking at the material because <laughs> there were too many, too many species to be described. So that's one problem with really the Oh, yeah, I don't know if it's a problem. Yeah. Chris, Chris wouldn't say it's a problem, actually, trying, but sometimes it's kind of frustrating. And so as you can see, this is an interesting plot of leafhopper diversity through this being described throughout the years, uh, based and uh, divided by subfamilies. Obviously, Cicadoline is uh, uh, the main group that Brazilians are working with. We're three taxonomies on cicadolines, so 
we are basically describing all this again. There is still so many more species to describe on Secret of the Line, so the rate is still pretty high in Secret of the Line, and it will be one of, certainly the, the subfamily with the highest diversity in Brazil, always, I guess. But if you see from around uh, early, early 2000s, we have a shift in descriptions of the Iosline, that's on the Japonine and by Alexander and Clayton. They, they've been describing like crazy, those Japonines. So basically now Iosine is like two species short, uh, three species short of being the second largest subfamily in Brazil. So that's quite an achievement in the last 10 years, no, 20 years or so. Um, the Brazilian Okinomika, so this was a step that we worked on a lot last year, is actually put on the database um, distributional records, at least the regional records for distribution of the species. So that, that took a whole year for us to put distribution of almost 4,000 species in the database. And right now we have about 81% of the species with distributional data. And those that don't have, not because we were lazy, it's because it has been described in Brazil, from Brazil, so it doesn't have a state record. So we have, uh, most of the species have been described from southeastern or reported from southeastern Brazil. Um, that's 14, that's 1,400 species here in southeastern Brazil. Then in the north, northern Brazil, that's 1,100 species. Uh, and that's a parallel more or less with the number of taxonomists that are actively working. So in south, southeastern Brazil, we have many more taxonomists actively working labs and professors hired. So that's obviously, that's gonna be the largest problem. And that's basically for the basic in Brazil. And that also reflects um, the distribution within biomes in Brazil. So in Brazil, this year, this, there is a big coastal forest here. It's called the Atlantic Forest. Uh, it's a rainforest. So most of the species, almost half of the species have been described from the Atlantic Forest in Brazil here. And, and the other half of the flies in the Amazon basin. And I think it's obvious that the Amazon basin has a lot, many more species to describe more than the Atlantic forest. But historically, this is where uh, historical collections were, or where workers have been, to, have been describing species. So basically, in summary, uh, I want to say that Brazilians are picking up on describing their own fauna basically since the 70s. Uh, we picked up our bigger rate now recently. Alcanorinca is still largely undescribed in Brazil, especially in some groups of photomorphs. Uh, we need to focus on more on, on the study groups, obviously. Uh, better sample other regions in Brazil, not just the Atlantic Forest and not just the southeastern Brazil. And obviously, we we'll train more students to increase our descriptions rate so that we actually can get an estimate of the Alcanorinca fauna in Brazil that's largely undescribed. So I think that's, I think that's it. <laughs>